building these stairs. I'm making a video for my other channel, my main channel, um, showing this build. <sighs> wow, I I've forgotten how to talk. <laughs> anyway, uh, I thought this might be interesting to show how I'm going to be putting them together. I spent, I don't know, th about three hours yesterday just cutting out the, the step sections right here. And as you can see, they're not very big and they have to be glued together so that they form the spiral going up. And to do that, to do that accurately is very difficult. I'm a, I could use super glue, I guess. But I came up with a different idea here, and it's to cut progressively taller blocks, and the blocks will support each step. And I've got to do all this before the, you know, I start making the video itself, because this all has to go smoothly. Like, there's a common difference between these. If you've ever framed a roof or something like that, and you've got the gable on the end there, the jack studs that are in there, they have a common uh, difference, it's called. You know, you start off with one, say that's 12 inches, and then the pitch of your roof, you're able to calculate how tall, how much taller the next one needs to be, and then the next one after that. So you don't have to measure each one. You'll be able to just quickly look it up on your framing square. It all has that um, information right on there, and just cut them all to the same size. And in my case here, the common difference is... Um, it can be calculated, but it's better to use the actual pieces. So this is the one that holds up that step. And I'm going to use that and the next step to mark my next one. And because this is so close and it's tolerances here, I'm not working with very much. The wood is like an eighth of an inch thick. I'm using my marking knife that I made several years ago to mark it. And then I'm very carefully cutting it out on the miter saw. The only problem is I'm running out of stick. I've got to cut some more stick. It's a few hours later and as you can see, I've got part of it assembled. Well, most of it assembled. I just came out after spending about a half an hour inside waiting for this to dry uh, and discovered that I made a mistake on this one right here. I glued it on a little bit too high, so I had to break that joint and re-glue it. Now I've got to wait for that to dry. In the meantime, I sanded the last two steps uh, that go on here. I've been sanding those as they go, as I go, I mean, because wow, is that a tedious job? That's like, I'd say at least 90% of the work here is just sanding this stuff so it comes out smooth. Since I cut it all with the table saw, you gotta get rid of the table saw marks. Anyway, so this thing is really delicate. And I think that the basically the only thing that's gonna keep it from collapsing under its own weight <laughs> is the fact of how it's structured, because it starts here on this just one little strip, right? That's the only thing that's glued to the base, is that one uh the bottom of one riser. And that's holding up the whole thing. But if you look at the center here and how it's all straight down, so everything kind of cantilevers off of that, and it all kind of balances, or at least that's my hope. That looks pretty good. I've got two left to do, but I just decided that this is the last one that I'm going to actually film putting on. I'm going to pretend it's the last one. And nobody will notice because nobody notices those kinds of things. Uh, trying to wipe off the glue without shifting it around too much. Careful to check it this time. Uh, I've got the heat gun to kind of cheat because it's already five o'clock. And I've been at this, like I said, all day. I think I said it before, that's one of the things that a lot of people don't get. How much time is involved in something like this. Even something that looks relatively simple. It takes a long time. Especially when you throw in the added complexity of trying to 
film it. And when you're filming it, you have to concentrate on two things. And often you'll make mistakes like I did down here. I glued it on crooked because you got to try to hurry it type thing so you can turn off the camera and all that because batteries don't last forever. And you want to try to get all of the recording done before the battery goes dead. So that looks good. Okay, that's going to be it. I have to let this dry overnight. And uh, tomorrow morning, I think what I'll do is I will give it... Uh, I want to be able to finish it fast. It's Wednesday today. I really want to have this ready for at, at least Sunday main channel Saturday if possible so maybe some spray urethane or spray lacquer we'll see it is the next day I brought the model in my house last night just to make sure that the glue fully dried because it's you know it's cooler out here and what I'm doing now is I'm very carefully sanding the edges here so they line up better and just you know touching up spots that need it and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it with the uh, Danish oil. I changed my mind about the spray lacquer and all that. I'm just going to put on a coat of this and see what it looks like. This will uh, dry fairly quickly. I'll just paint it on out here if I don't break it and bring it back in my house you know where it's warmer and it'll dry up quicker. It's fairly, you know, it's 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 like springy, and it uh, it moves if you look at it, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's very delicate. But I think it's going to be okay. I don't if it can survive me sanding it. I think we're going to be all right. Okay, I got it all painted, and uh, uh, I just need to wipe off the excess. So I've got a paper towel here. I'm not going to show this in the video. That last bit, me painting the bottom, that's it before it switches to stills of the finished thing. A uh, couple of problems with it, mainly with from the glue. Um, when I, you know, I tried to wipe up as much as I could. <laughs> However, it being very difficult to put any pressure in there to wipe off you know to truly wipe it off and I couldn't really wet the the cloth to do it I've got some squeeze out that's showing a little bit in the corners of the treads here but I don't think I'm gonna worry about that too much because it's the overall look of the thing in my opinion I mean, if you get it in close and you see little tiny bits of glue squeeze out and you say, oh, what a, you know, what a sloppy bastard. Why didn't he, you know, clean up that glue squeeze out? But that doesn't bother me. I've been called worse things by better people. <laughs> uh, anybody that criticizes, you know, anybody that looks at something like this and then the, the thing that they have to say, the thing that the observation that they make is that there's glue squeeze out along the treads, a very small amount. That's the type of person that you generally don't want to associate. That's the type of person that you will mock behind their back. Okay, because they're petty. That's pettiness. Okay, that's nitpickery on the highest order. Am I coming across strong enough on this? Because I see this a lot in the comments, you know, people see the project and it's like, you know, whatever the project is, they don't see the project or they ignore the project. And then they zoom in on the smallest, most insignificant detail and they blow way out of proportion. Yeah, I'm done now. I'm done ranting. I'm, I'm done raging. I'm done screaming at you. <laughs> Man, that wood looks great. This is Sepele, by the way, and the base is maple. I guess still got to do the bottom. I should do that now before I forget about it. An even coat on everything. Uh, I don't know how many coats I'm going to put on. 
you have to sand in between coats, not heavy sanding, but light sanding. And uh, sanding is kind of nerve wracking on this. I had to do the heavy stuff, but I don't know, we'll see. At the moment, I really don't have any place to put it. In my future plans, I have a credenza that I want to put my uh, audio video gear in my living room to kind of hide that away and put all my, you know, DVDs and Blu-rays, the movies that, you know, I like to watch and stuff like that inside. And that's going to be an upcoming project. I don't know when upcoming. The problem is, you know, I still haven't completely finished my house. Now, break it, John. I still haven't completely finished my house, and that really takes the priority for as far as stuff on the inside. Uh, as far as furniture, I, you know, I got enough to live <laughs> type thing. Um, you know, the thing about furniture is it's important when you're, you know, the family man, but, you know, if you're single, like I am now, and I'm forever will remain, because I've, I've had my fill of that relationship thing. That's the reason why I have no furniture. <laughs> now, I had lots of furniture at, one, at two points, actually. And it somehow left my possession. Okay? Anyway. <laughs> so I don't have any place to put this just yet. So... It's probably going to be, I'll put it in the closet and drape a, you know, a, a paper towel over it so it'll keep the dust off it type thing. What I'd like to do is try to make a, not try to, make Yoda, there is no try, make a glass case for it. And that would keep the dust off and you'd still be able to look in there and say, wow, look at that thing, man, that's amazing. And then the glass case on its own would be another project. I used to make all kinds of stuff like that. I made a ship in a, a glass case at one point, long, long time ago. And the thing about the ship was that the sails were made out of uh, out of pine. I made the I made everything other than the rigging. You know, the ropes were just made out of you know string, but all of the boat was made out of wood, including the sails. And it looked pretty cool. And I had it in a, in a case that just had a glass front. It was pretty neat. And, and that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> We're having fun this morning, man. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Briefly, just to wrap this video up. Um, I finished uh, wiping it off. What I'm going to try to do when, the, when this stuff dries... This first coat dries. I'm going to sand it, of course. But I'm going to get in there with the knife and try to scrape out the glue in the corner there. See if that solves the problem. Um, you know what? It's not, a, it's not on every tread. It's just on some. And it's really bad on this one right here, right there. And you can see the white glue. I hate using that glue for anything that you're going to finish. I would have much rather used the polyurethane construction adhesive because that doesn't doesn't do this it if it squeezes out it doesn't sink into the wood like this stuff does uh, so I'm gonna close up my, but I need to brush again just because these are disposable that doesn't mean you should dispose of them right away I put it inside the the jar and put my rubber glove on top which is two layers of course and then I'll because I'm going to use this probably later on today. I'm going to bring this inside now where it's a lot warmer and it'll dry a lot quicker. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to wrap this one up. And if you haven't watched the video on the actual build, I encourage you to go do that immediately. There will be a link in the description. And of course, I think I'm going to link it right at the end of the video, right? You know, when the funky music is playing.